What's up gamers and welcome to a new episode of Lax Claudia. You guys know what time it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new banner. Today we're going to be talking about... Actually, we're going to be doing a step up by the way. Thought I'd bring that up. But before we do the step up, we're going to talk about Holy Knight Ryudo. So let's go ahead and get in there. As soon as I hit the right button. Alright, so this is a knight. Looking like he's got some 5782 on that HP. Pretty high. A 980 strength defense at 1367, mine 1132. Uh, those defensive stats there is definitely what's important. The HP defense in mind. Uh, those stats basically because this is going to be yet another tank that Adis is finally delivering to us. Now looking at resistances, basically he just has a resistance to stun and curse, which is decent. Uh, no weaknesses, which is good. And he has a resistance to light and dark magic damage. Uh, as far as his skills are concerned, I mean, this is basically mostly light related stuff. Uh, the second one is one that's going to be kind of important. I'll go ahead and read it. A chance for temp effect making all enemies target unit. Uh, basically, he's taunting. So chance up, mind higher. Okay, so I'm not going to read that part. I'm just going to explain what it's saying. The higher, if your mind is higher than the opponent's, then your chances of this going off will be higher. If your mind is lower, then your chances of it working will be much less. Uh, so basically, what they're trying to tell you is build up his mind. That's basically what it is. And then also, chance of skill if level rises. So that's another thing, too. I guess, like, you know, if you're level 100, your chances go up is what I'm assuming that means. Could be wrong, though. You know how they are in this game. Sometimes you read something and... You read into it, but you're, you're actually end up being wrong on what it actually says. That's just how it is. Uh, so hopefully some people out there can actually figure out what all that means. Uh, skill 3, charge and deal a frontal wide area light combo attack. So more light. And then the special invincibility, probably the most important thing he has. Reduce damage taken to 0 for 12 seconds. Uh, durability is max HP times 2. And greatly recover HP. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, basically just dropping damage, giving you a little bit of a shield. Always a good thing what a, you know, a paladin should do. Speaking of paladin, that's the name of one of his traits. What a segue. Nullify flinch from magic attacks. That's fantastic right there in itself. Partial resistance to interruption when activating skills. Uh, defense increases the more damage is taken from enemies. Max 35%. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, let me read that again. I really hate how they word this sometimes. <laughs> Alright, so I get the partial resistance to um, being interrupted with skills. That's actually important because, you know, a lot of times you're trying to do a skill and they stop you. Here's the second part that threw me off. Defense increases the more damage is taken from any... Okay, so the more damage you take... The more defense you get. Okay, I get it. The wording just kills me. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> it, it makes me sound like I'm illiterate or something. I, I promise I actually did okay back in the old school days. Anyway, second trait, War Cry. When taking damage from enemy attacks that target all, so AoE stuff, damage to unit plus 100%, but damage to all allies, or damage to allies, minus 50%. Uh, when unit is incapacitated, defense in mind plus 50% and physical flinch null buff for all allies. So basically, what this is telling me is, one, uh, he basically will be taking more damage anytime an AoE is done, which in turn will protect the rest of the team by making them only take half. Pretty good. I actually pretty, I like that a lot. Uh, basically, you're going to be building up his mind anyway. So this shouldn't be a big deal if you build them correctly. And then, of course, you and I mean a big deal as far as you getting hurt. And as far as your teammates, they can continue doing what they do. It's great. And, of course, if he dies, or while he's dead, as a matter of fact, uh, basically physical flinch is null. And that's really, really strong. Now, keep in mind that if you're in an arena, they're going to be respawning in a matter of seconds, so you have a limited amount of time before you can take advantage of it. But in that time, a lot of interesting things can happen. So I can already tell this is going to be an arena-worthy character. Let's take a look at his actual skills. So he comes with God Heal, because what, you know, 
tankish, heelish person doesn't come with God heal. Stardust heal. Resolve up two and five. Guard, vigilance, spell guard, guard charge. So those are the cool guards you can get. X guard, which is new. Uh, when guard is equipped, damage taken during guard minus 15%. When HP drops to 50% or lower, guard rate up. Now, this is something that's kind of necessary right here because the problem with the guard mechanic with most characters is that the chance to guard is very low. Uh, with the exception of Lanceville, I've heard. I believe supposedly his guard chances is higher than everyone else. I never pulled him, so I don't know for sure. But with this guy, you have even a higher chance to get it, assuming that your HP drops below 50%. And if you're building him properly, you're probably giving him some HP ups anyway, so being at 50% is probably not that bad anyway. Uh, he also has Guard Impact, which is new as well. When Guard is equipped, a chance to make nearby enemies flinch when guarding. Wow. That's actually pretty cool. So I guard and bam, you stop. Which means my teammates can take advantage of you and do stuff. That's actually pretty cool. Because of Royal Armor, Fiend Shield, this is another new one. Uh, damage from monster type enemies, minus 20%, uh, which is Beast, Fish, Plant, Insect, Bird, and Creatures. So that's actually really cool. I actually like that. Uh, basically, a shield against multiple types is always good. Just like Slayers of multiple types, always good. Knight Mastery, another new one. Uh, when unit type is Knight, defense plus 10%, physical attacks effect against soldiers, and damage from soldiers minus 10%. So basically, you're going to be taking 10% less and dealing 10% more is what's going to happen. If I'm, not, if I'm reading this right. I'm sorry. Your, your defense increases. Okay, so when your type is Knight, your defense was 10%, and then physical attacks effective against soldiers, and then damage from soldiers minus 10%. Okay. So, yeah, you still be dealing more damage, but you get 10% um, uh, protection, which is good. Auto protect, awesome. Auto haste is good. Awaken is good. Sacred Guardian, this is another new one. Recovery magic power plus 20%. Recovery magic cast speed plus 50%. So things like, you know, God Heal and uh, all the other stuff that he has is going to be much faster. Uh, Goddess Kiss, so we can get his MP back. Allure, so we can make people hit him more. Uh, taunt, basically. Chivalrous Mindset, which we've seen it before. Doppelhander, which is what Kyle has. Uh, armor Boost, Armor High Boost, of course, he's going to have that. Uh, Phalanx, let's take a look at that. When Armor is equipped, take Killer, Slayer Damage, minus 20%. And take critical damage minus 20%. So having basically a protection from slayers and crits in one ability is pretty good. I like it. Special shield 2. Uh, special damage from enemies minus 30%. So this is going to be mainly important in the tower. That's that's really what this is for. Uh, skill charge 2. Rapid recovery in either shield. This is another new one. We got nullify fainting from enemy attacks. When close to death, reduce physical damage. Taken to zero for seven seconds once per wave. All right. So that's not bad either. So he's got a lot of good defensive stuff. Obviously, he's the tank. And my predictions for my first impression of this guy is great for PvP, great for tower. Uh, and he might be even pretty good for boss fights to keep your party alive. Now, the question is, should you pull for this guy? Because I know that probably a lot of people have spent a lot of their resources getting Kyle. And if you're one of those that doesn't have any more resources because of it, should you pull on him? You don't necessarily have to. You don't, the only time I would say that you would need to pull him is if you were big on PvP, then you might need him. But other than that, I wouldn't go for him unless you just happen to have extra crystals and you don't mind. But if you happen to have Spirit Ma Maiden Theria and uh, Night Lord Kyle, you don't have to get this guy. You'll still be able to do content well without him if you got those two. But if you don't have either one, then I think it's a good idea to try to pick this guy up. Uh, he'll definitely fill the tankish role that you would be lacking from not having Theria or Kyle. So, you know, it just depends on the situation. Me, personally, I'm not going to go for him aggressively because, one, I don't care that much about PvP or Arena. And two, I have Kyle and, and Theria, so I'm actually going to be okay for a long time. So if I pull this guy, it's just an added bonus, and I'm probably not even going to level him for a while. Uh, but but he is still a good character in general. Uh, and don't worry about pulling him for the sake of tower. Even though he's good at tower, if you have if your tower squad can already beat all the floors, you don't really need him, right? 
but he's still a really good unit. Um, now for the Ark. So this is going to be Mindscape God of Ruin. So, Ark Attribute. This is an SSR in the general pool. When near death, buff unit to nullify damage taken. Durability is 100% of your mind. Not applied against unit. For, uh, 40 seconds passes. Uh, okay, so basically you can do it again in 40 seconds is what I'm assuming. Uh, stone resistance plus 2. Really good. When unit is alive and all allies are incapacitated, revive all allies with HP 50% uh, once per quest. So this is a very specific thing. Like if you're fighting a boss and they basically wipe you except for your, you know, tank or whatever. Basically everybody else will revive. Which is actually convenient. Especially if you're trying to give it to this new Ryudo. Uh, basically he doesn't have any kind of resurrection. So that'll be a way to kind of get it for you. But it's a very situational thing. Cool, anyway, let's take a look at what you can learn. So this time with this arc, you got Silence Resist, Fast R, Scald, this is a new one, when near death, magic casting speed plus 20%. For 3 SC, that's pretty good, actually. You can probably put this in just about any of your mages and be good with it. Uh, Metis Phaser, uh, Wisdom Protection, Battle Start, add 5% of your intelligence to your defense in mine. So that's pretty good for specific builds. And Staff High Boost, which I do not believe we actually have uh, equipable on any other arc. So this will be a first. When the Staff is equipped, Physical Attack Power plus 10% and Magic Attack Power plus 20%. Really, really good to have. Would definitely like to get that. So I really want to get the arc. Uh, as far as the character, I could do without. I'll pass. But as far as the arc, I definitely want that. What's the Aether Award? We have the Banishment Robe. All right. So... This is a six star robe, intelligence 34, defense 81, mine 254. Wow, that's some high mine right there. Uh, magic damage received minus 10%, recovery magic power plus 15%. I just like it for the stats, mainly. You have a robe that's giving you intelligence, so you're getting a buff to an offensive stat. Your defensive buffs are through the roof, which is really, really good. And also you get a bonus of attribute resistance to light and dark by 10. So that's, you know, kind of an added bonus. But overall, this is a decent item. Would I throw all my Ethereum to get it? Probably not. But if I were to eventually get it over time, I would definitely use it. So pretty good. So overall, this is a really good arc. Uh, you want Staff High Boost for sure. Uh, Scald is another ability you probably want to get as well. So this is all around a really good arc just for those two skills to learn. And of course, the Ether Reward is actually decent. So yeah, not bad. So let's go ahead and do some gotcha pulls. We're going to do the step up. That's right. How you know how we do this? And let's see if we can get... And once I do the step up, I'm pretty much done. I'm not really... Again, I'm not going to aggressively pull for this guy. And the arc's going to be in the general pull, so I'm not too worried about pushing for it. What I'm considering doing, if I don't get it here is I might actually go for uh, using some of my SSR art tickets and see if we can get it that way. Debating it while I'm recording. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so it's just gonna stay yellow. So I gotta be some more uh, <laughs> Crimson Ores, that's right. The quest is how many Crimson Ores can we collect here? <laughs> All right, so who do we got with us this time? So we're starting blue like normal, and it's Kyle all by himself. He's so lonely. Mm -mm -mm, poor guy. Not getting nothing. That's okay. We got some Crimson Wars is what we got. 30 <laughs> to count. All right, let's go ahead and do the next step. And this is pretty much all I'm investing in this banner. Because again, I'm not particularly pushing for the character. Don't need him. Wow, Kyle all by himself. He must have upset his friends. I don't know what he did. Probably didn't say something that someone didn't like. I don't know. But man, we are getting the shaft, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting a total of 50 Crimson Wars. That's what we're getting today. Absolutely. And let's go ahead and do the free 10 pull with all of our paid purchases. I mean, technically, it's not free if you paid to get there, right? <laughs> all right, let's see if we got... Oh, there's a little bit. 
She's forgiven Kyle. Oh, that's right. He traded in Theria for Lilibet. He's like, I want to grow with a little more uh, sass. That's right. We're starting off yellow. Can Lilibet support him? Will there be a match made in heaven? Are they getting married? The answer is no, ladies and gentlemen. She was just teasing him. That's all it was. She just wanted him to buy her dinner and split. That was all. She was just using him. 175 Crimson Wars, ladies and gentlemen. And the step of gotcha has ended. Am I disappointed? Nah, not really. But let's go ahead and talk about the items that you could potentially purchase through the credentials. See uh, what's worth it. Now, obviously, I'm not going to invest here, but let's take a look. We have the Saint Blade Zerveil. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Or Zerveil, that's probably how it's pronounced. So, for Holy Knight Ryudo, this is a light attribute sword. 169 strength, defense 22, mind 11. Light attack critical rate plus 8%, damage plus 25% for the skill Southern Cross, which I believe is, yeah, it's one of his skills. I'm not sure which one, but it's one of them. So this is okay. Now you might feel disappointed because the strength is, you know, not too close to 200, but again, he's not trying to deal a ton of damage. He's a tank, right? So you're not really trying to build him for that. And you're getting some defense in mind with a sword. So that's what's actually interesting here. Because typically with a weapon, you're not getting much defense, but with this one you are, which makes sense because he's a paladin. Uh, overall, it seems okay. I do like the light attack critical rate increase plus damage uh, for a certain skill. Well, that's not bad. But let's take a look at the uh, the robe here, or that might be armor. Yeah, Saint Plate Hochdelg. I feel like I'm in a different country when I said Hochdelg. Anyway, so this is a piece of armor. HP 250, defense 149, mine 87, so some decent stats. Battle start, restore SCT 20 seconds to, to the second skill. Boss wave start, special gauge plus 10%, continuous magic barrier effect. And you get a resistance to stun. So if you equip this to Ryudo, that is basically going to give you a null to stun, which is good. Uh, that'll be something to keep them moving constantly. Now this particular armor I actually think is better than a sword. Uh, you're getting a pretty decent defensive buff, a de an okay mind, and a little bit of HP is always good. Uh, giving yourself some SCT at the beginning is always good. And then getting your special gauge up at boss fights is not bad either. I think that's something that uh, a couple other people do as well now. And a continuous magic barrier is just an added bonus, especially since you know, he's going to be taking more AoE damage, so he needs something like that. So if you're the kind of person that's kind of budgeting and wants to get one of these items and not both, I would highly recommend the Saint Plate armor over the uh, Saint Blade. Uh, the Saint Blade is okay, but it's really nothing too special. But I think the Saint Plate is actually really, really good. So my recommendation, get the Saint Plate, get the armor. And you know what? Just for the sake of having some fun, let's go ahead and use up just a couple of my SSR tickets. See if we can't get that arc. And I actually do want the arc. So let's go ahead and use that SSR gotcha tickets. I got four of them right now. Let's just blow them all. Let's do it. Let's see if we can't get it here. Because again, I want the arc for sure. That's the main thing I want. Oh, we got Theria. Theria has forgiven Kyle for his transgressions. He even got his boy Zika's back. Oh, look at that. Now, lilibet has gone. She already used them. She's gone away. But let's see what happens here. We already know we're getting SSRs, right? So we don't have to guess here. But I'll play the cinematic, because why not? Do we get anything new here? No, we do not. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. We tried. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for today. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you happen to get Ryudo, uh, congrats. And keep in mind that Ryudo is the shift version of Zuglas, which is why I have him here. Uh, I'm not going to go over st story spoilers because, you know, I'd rather you enjoy it for yourself. But the story is pretty good. And the event that's going on right now uh, is going over the backstory of this guy and how he became what he is. So check out the story if you're interested in that. And that's going to be pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Take care and keep gaming, y'all. Later.